Modest swimwear. A woman wearing full cover swimwear does laps in a pool. Shireen Sabet, founder and owner of Splash Care. 24 years ago, I became a scuba diver, and then three years after that, I became religious and started practicing my faith. I decided to dress modestly according to my faith's principles, or as some would say, I began to wear the hijab. But this posed a dilemma for me because I wasn't sure how I was going to continue scuba diving now that I was covered up. She works in a studio. This experience uh, really opened my eyes regarding the barriers to water activities that Muslim women in particular and modesty conscious women in general face. That's when I decided I wanted to contribute a solution by expanding the swimwear options in the marketplace for modesty conscious women. Based on the Islamic definition of modest dress, I knew the criteria that the swimmer line had to meet, and that required fabric that did not stick to the body, so it had to be quick drying, and it had to become unstuck from the body quickly after exiting the water. The designs had to be cut so that they were not skin tight or revealing, and the colors had to be opaque so they were not transparent when wet. When I first set out to design Splash Gear swimsuits, I knew that the concept of full body swimwear was so alien that my sisters would experience hard stares, um, possibly ridicule or mocking or even hostility. Armed police stand over a Muslim woman, interrupting her enjoyment of the French seaside. They seem to order her to remove some of her clothes, enforcing the so-called burkini ban prohibition of full-length swimsuits now in place in the coastal city of Nice. I am very disturbed that Muslim women have been targeted for their desire to voluntarily dress modestly and their persecution in places such as France, Germany and North Africa where full cover swimmer has been banned at the pool. Why have the local mayors been banning the burkini in the first place? Well, mayors have been citing a wide range of reasons. Some have been citing uh, hygienic reasons, for instance. A lot of them have uh, said it's a question of public order uh, and security given the current state of emergency that we're still here in, here in France uh, in the wake of the terrorist attacks. Others have gone further, though, and say that the burkini is a symbol of religious extremism and thus an insult to France's state secularism, laïcité. On the streets of London, dozens of protesters gather to express their outrage. So as you can see, they've set up a makeshift beach here outside the French embassy, complete with inner tubes, towels, lots of sand. Organizers tell me this is an act of solidarity. The women ought to be able to make their own choice about what they wear, whether that be a bikini or a burkini, it makes no difference. Australian designer Aheda Zanetti says these politicians don't understand. She designed one popular take on the burkini, the top, the bottom and the hood, to promote integration. The burkini swimsuit was born in Australia, you know, amongst Australian lifestyle and it was meant to integrate within the Australian society, you know. We didn't want to be judged upon by a Muslim and non-Muslim and so forth. We're just out there to swim. The burkini is back on the beach. The ban's been overturned in just one resort on the French Riviera, but it's expected to lead to the lifting of bans in all 30 coastal towns that had it in place. France's highest court agreed with the argument that the ban was a serious and clearly illegal violation of fundamental freedoms. What I would like to see throughout the world is for any woman to be free to cover up during water activities and not be denied her right to participate publicly in water recreation while wearing full coverage swimwear.